Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you. Let's just pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for your truth is making sense in our hearts. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for guidance and leading us step by step into your truth and bringing us revelation. And I will see the result of your word walking in us. Thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now, I've been talking to you, getting you set for the times ahead. And I told you that what you must hold there in this season is tight. It's the pillar that is going to help not just you as a believer but help the world also god have set this from the foundation of the earth yes he had but because of ignorance men have not been walking according to the patterns of the lord so think about it just just think about it you know you see paul said something in galatians chapter 6 and he says Let's, 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 let's go there quickly. Oh, Muntabraki Shabra Nakashaka. Book of Galatia, chapter 6. From verse 7. It said, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that he also, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Now what does it mean to sow to the flesh? It means your reasoning is what guides your sowing. See, so I like that pastor. I like the way that pastor preaches. I'm, I'm going to sow into him. Or I'm going to give him my tithe. Oh, I like this church. I'm going to give them my tithe. It's not even your tithe. Can you imagine? It's not even your tithe. It's his own. Say, yeah, it's his own. That's why Malachi asked that question. Will a man rob God? And then God was clear to say, ye have robbed me. And he was like, how did we rob you? Imagine stealing from God. How, how is it possible to steal? He said, yes, you did. How? In tithe and in offerings. And guess what? Many are still robbing him till this day. See? If you take your tithe and you give it to where God has not commanded you to give it. You have just robbed him. Yes, you have robbed him. It's like, it's like you do business with a friend. And, and the payment was made. And you are the one who received the payment. And then when you received the payment, you didn't call up your friend or your business partner. You just decided to spend the money the way you think you should spend it. See? You may even take it also. Ah, this is my friend, his wife. She needs a brand new car. Let me buy a brand new car. And then you buy the brand new car and give it to his wife. You're still robbing the person because you never ask the person, what's your plan for this money? See, Maybe he had plans that will give him better money so he can buy several cars for his wife. You don't know. But that's what, what a lot of us do. You say, oh, I like that church. Hmm. Hmm, I like the way they preach in that church. That's where I'll be sending my tithes to. You don't have that right to do that. Oh, I like that preacher that preached on TV. I'm going to be sending him my tithe. It's still not right. Oh, someone said, no, no, no. I, I'm, I know what to do. All these churches, they can never eat my money again. From now on, I'll be giving my money to orphanage. You still don't have the right to do that. Your intentions may be good, but it's wrong. Why? You haven't asked the owner yet, what do you want me to do with your money? He's the one that would tell you, take it to that orphanage. They are my children. He said, okay, sir, I'll do as you have said. And then you go there and say, bless. See, that's what the Bible says, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. So when you get there, what do you say? I've come here in the name of the Lord. The Lord sent me here and he says, I should give you this. And I say, oh, praise God. Praise God. Yeah. See, that's how it works. And he say, oh, you know, that, that preacher or that church, 
Take your tithes to that church. Ah, you know, someone shared this testimony with me a few years ago. He said, you know, she's talking to me about her dad. See, her dad was driving one day. And he was driving by a church. Just a church by the road. And he heard the word of the Lord say to him, take your tithe and give it to that church. Now, he didn't know this church or the preacher from anywhere. And then he got there. He, he drove in and walked into the place and said, well, this is what the Lord commanded me to do. And then he gave them the money. Oh, the pastor screamed and said, this is exactly what we have been praying for. <laughs> so you see, did God hear their prayer? Yes, he did. He heard them. He sent someone. Now, you know the Bible says that whoever gives to the poor is lending to the Lord. Now, you know, so when, you read, when you read something, take time to reflect. Not just reflect, but sometimes even our brains don't have the capacity to understand it until the Holy Spirit helps you. So take out time to ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, can you teach me what this thing is about? So what does it mean? He that gives to the poor lends to the Lord. Why did he say the one who gives to the poor lends to the Lord? And then guess what he said? He said, and what he has borrowed God, God will surely repay him. Giving to the poor doesn't bring blessing. But whatever you give to the poor shall be paid you, even with interest. But that's not the blessing. You know why? Because, can you receive this? Can you receive this? Because in the first place, God didn't ordain for you to give to the poor. Uh, uh. <laughs> you know, you know when you say this in some, yes, I like the fact that it's shaking you now, so you will listen more. <laughs> Praise God! Yes. So when you give to the poor, which looks good, God say you are helping me out, and because you've given that, I'll repay you. Thank you. Because you know the truth. You are bridging the gap that someone should have done. You see that poor man that you gave to, you gave to him because he didn't have. You see that poor man, God had commanded someone to bring his tithes to him. But the person has not heard the voice of the Lord. Yeah. You see, that's why you remember Jesus when, when the woman broke that perfume and poured on him. And then Judas spoke up. And he influenced the other disciples. The disciples began to say, Ah, but it's not better that this thing should have been sold and given to the poor. What did Jesus say? He said, Relax. You always have the poor with you. And are you, if a preacher says that today, I know what the headlines will say. Bishop so and so says it is not good to give to the poor. Bishop stops woman from giving her offering to the poor about using it to buy perfume for him. That, that's what the headlines will say. But Jesus said, he said, relax. She's done the right thing. You know why? About the poor, you will always have them. Why would Jesus just say a thing like that and, and it looks okay? Because he has made provision for the poor. Every poor person you see, I tell you this, every poor person you see, you see a disobedience walking that's why that person is like that someone has not obeyed the voice of God that's why you see those poor people you see God his ways are perfect there is no fault in his way it is men what did the Bible say his hands are not short that he cannot reach us but what has happened our iniquity our iniquity. Now he's not just talking about God's hand being shot towards you. You look at, you know, sometimes you look at and say, but, but why are all these things happening? Why, why is this? Why is there wickedness everywhere? Why are people wicked? Why are people suffering? Why are people poor? Ask yourself. Not God. What should I ask myself? Why haven't you been obeying the voice of the Lord? Yeah, but, but I didn't hear. Did you pay attention to him? Now that's why I'm bringing this truth to you so that you will begin to pay attention. 
If oh, the Lord told me this one day, and, he, and, and my mind just opened and I saw it. He said, son, if all my children, he said, my children, you know, if all my children will tithe the way I instruct them to tithe, you will not find any poor. He said, how? Yes. You see, you are there in your house, blessing the Lord. Lord, thank you for giving me this money. I acknowledge this money came from you. And Lord, what do you want me to do with this tithe? And then you hear the Lord says, your neighbor next door, give it to him. Okay, Lord, is that really what you want to do? You no, know, sometimes you want, Lord, can you give me a confirmation, please? And I said, okay, Lord, when I open the door, can I, I just let us come out of our houses at the same time? Then I'll know that you, you really. And then he opened the door. And I said, oh, yeah, next thing. Like, hey, neighbor, how are you doing? And he'll greet you as though I'm waiting for you. <laughs> you know, oh, oh, how are you? How are you? You know, sometimes people even go, hey, Lord, maybe this one is even a coincidence. <laughs> Can you confirm again? But what if you simply obey? You go knock on his door. Hey, hello. Ah, neighbor, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. You know what? I was praying this morning and the Lord commanded me to come and give you something. Oh, really? God commanded to give me something? Yeah. So what is it? He said, this is it. And he receives it. Maybe a check. Or oh, maybe oh, he said, give me your account number. Let me transfer it to you. And then he sees the amount. He said, whoa. He said, what is it? Do you know this is my house rent? The landlord said, if I don't pay today, he's throwing me out. And throughout the night, I couldn't sleep. I was praying to the Lord. And then you said, ah, oh, really? Last night, maybe God heard your prayer. So he commanded me to come and give you this this morning. So I'm just obeying the Lord. I said, whoa. Now, you know what you just done? You have just confirmed to that fellow that God is real. Think about it. Someone is looking for money. And he's told himself, if I don't get that money today, because someone else is telling him, come, let's go and rob. Come, come and join our gang. Let's go and rob. No, I don't want to rob. I don't want to be an arm robber. I say, look at you. You will keep suffering. You will keep suffering. You say, you're looking for that money. Where do you think it's going to come from? You will keep suffering. Didn't you ask your uncle? Did he give you? Didn't you ask that your brother? Did he give you? I'm telling you the way out. And then he tells himself, Lord, I don't know. I've tried. If you don't answer me this night, I don't know. Tomorrow I may just go and join that gang. And then here he is. Someone knocks on his door. Maybe no, no, no. And he said, hey, how are you doing? I don't know. God was thinking about you yesterday. He said, I should come give you this. And he looks the exact money. And then he remembers, you say, God told him, he sent you to give it to him. What do you think is going to happen to that fellow? Ah, that means God doesn't want me to join this. I would not. I would not. And then he gets the call. Hey, are you coming? Sorry. I'm not coming and I'm not going that way. And I think I need you to repent because see, God, he becomes a preacher automatically. <laughs> That's how we reduce crime in the society. You see how the church becomes a light? Can you see how the church becomes a light? But what do we have today? People look at, ah, you're selfish. You know, someone, someone is carrying, he's packaging his tie to church. And then someone says, oh, brother, please, I, 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 I really need help. I need some money. Say, um, I don't have money. The only money I have. Don't look at this money you're seeing. Oh, this is my tight. I'm taking it to church. And then the fellow watches you go and shakes his head. He said, I'm hungry. He wouldn't listen to me. And he's taking it to church. Now, not just church. Anywhere else. He said, what should the person have done? Turn away from that person a while. And say, Lord, I just met a hungry man. And the money I have is your money. What do you want me to do? Do you have plans for him? Should I respond like this to him? You will hear the word of the Lord come to you. And when you respond, say, what if God doesn't speak? You, you will know. You will know. Because if you sense that peace in your heart, you say, Lord, should I? Say, go ahead. Give it to him. Thank you, I'll do it. <clears throat> Say, come. Take this. Go get something for yourself. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The world will see light 
like they've never seen before. You know why? The sons of God are rising. The earth has been waiting for their manifestation, but the season of their manifestation has come, and you are one of them. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.